What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today we are making a video solely based off of a tweet. The fact of the matter is this, your boy makes a lot of videos based on what he sees on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie. I've made probably like 10 videos that I've seen that were just based off tweets and this was a good one. So this guy on Twitter, I need to find his at and if I do find it, it'll be right here and it'll play over. If it doesn't, that means I forgot to do so. So, sorry about that. But it was a guy ranking his top 10 teams of the last decade. Now, it's not like he grades all of these overall teams. Because, you know, obviously the Patriots would be number one. Like, that's no, no doubt about that. But, instead of doing that, what he did was is he picked a year and a team that year that was really impressive. So, like the 2015 Cardinals, the 2013 Seahawks, you know... Teams like that. And I really wanted to make this video because I think he got some teams wrong. And I think there should have been other teams added to that list as well. One team that caught my eye that I thought was completely wrong and I was shocked by was the 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, and you're probably thinking to yourself, Tree, what the hell? Like, defend us. We're like one of the best now. Like, we went 10-6 and six that year. We went to the AFC Championship game. But we beat a team that we always beat. We always beat Pittsburgh. Like, that's just what we do. And it was exciting. But we still lost like to the Cardinals, to the Jets, to the Titans twice. Like we did not like win enough games or, you know, were terrific on offense enough to say that we were one of the ten best teams of the last decade. Like that just does not work. That just does not work. But I am here to give this list some justice and I'm here to give you my ten best teams of the last decade. In the NFL. Some of you guys might agree with me, some of you guys might not, but without further ado, let's hop right into the video. This is the top 10 best NFL teams of the last decade. Number 10, the 2011 Packers. This team gives me so much nostalgia, dude. I remember I was in love with the 2011 Packers when they were dominating when I was in elementary school. I remember they were playing the Steelers in the Super Bowl, and I was out there getting signatures from everybody because I was just a big football nerd in the sixth grade, let me tell you. And I was like, hey, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? You know, And everybody was picking Pittsburgh, and I'm like, y'all are sleeping on this guy named Aaron Rodgers. They're just like, oh, but Brett Favre doesn't play there anymore. You know, stupid little kids weren't aware of the greatness that is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers' his first Super Bowl, he led this team in, but dare I say it, he's been a dominant player his whole entire career, but there has never been a better season where he led a team than this year when they went to the Super Bowl and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. That was one epic Super Bowl. It was one to remember for sure. And then, you know, you had guys like Greg Jennings running around, Jordy Nelson, Clay Matthews in his prime, like... There were so many playmakers running around this field. You remember B.J. Raji? B.J. Raji was a big part of this Packer defense in 2011. And this was a, such a fun team to watch. And I definitely think earns a spot on the top 10 best teams of the decade. Number 9, the 2016 Atlanta Falcons. This was a team that was left off this guy's list. And I think they don't get enough credit for how truly electrifying this team was. They got a first round bye, and they had an elite offense led by, at that time, league MVP Matt Ryan. Now, they're not going to get the notoriety they deserve. They're not going to get the list privileges that they deserve because they choked away their lives in the Super Bowl. But that doesn't change the fact that this team was still dominant not only during the regular season, but in the playoffs. I remember watching the Salina Falcons team and thinking to myself, these guys are going to the Super Bowl. I even predicted when the playoffs started a Patriots-Falcons Super Bowl, and I predicted the Falcons to win. Unfortunately, could not take down the Brady Empire. But Matt Ryan still had a hell of a season. Julio Jones balled out too, had one of his best statistical season, if not his best statistical season ever as an Atlanta Falcon. And you had the two bruiser backs in Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. You know, that was the best running back duo in the league at the time in 2016. And it's not like their defense didn't do them any favors either. This defense was electrifying, holding teams to only short, minimal yards per game in short amount of scores you know they didn't allow a lot of points did this Falcons defense the secondary was nasty the defensive line played hard this was an all-around good team that's going to get lost in the mix because they lost the Super Bowl but I think without a doubt this 2016 Falcons team 
was one of the best in the last 10 years. Number 8, the 2018 Kansas City Chiefs. This team put on a show every single time they were on the field. They were fun to watch on offense. Their defense struggled a little bit, but they still had pieces on that side of the ball that were fun to watch. But this was, of course, the Patrick Mahomes show. This kid came onto the scene, threw 50 touchdown passes, and won the league MVP in his first career start. No one predicted that. I myself was very, very skeptical about Patrick Mahomes. I was like, there's no way the Chiefs do good. This is the Chargers division. The Chiefs can just lay down. But no, this Chiefs team was for real, and they wanted to show the entire league that. They were going toe-to-toe with the New England Patriots in a costly offsides penalty prevented them from going to the Super Bowl but the Super Bowl we deserved in 2018 was the Chiefs against the Rams because the Chiefs and the Rams on Monday Night Football that was one of the best games I ever watched in my entire life it was high scoring back and forth if you were a defensive football fan it definitely made you cringe but if you like the offensive football and the new philosophy that the league's going in then this game was for you. It was super exciting. Mahomes ended up on the losing side of that affair, but he showed to be dominant for the rest of the season, and he did not make a whole lot of mistakes. He was great. He had a terrific season, and everybody around him benefited as well. You know, like I said, I said this, you know, during the offseason of 2018, I was like, if Mahomes is going to succeed anywhere, this is where he needs to do it because he has targets down the field. We've seen it in the preseason. I think he launched like an 80-yard touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill in like the fucking preseason or something like that. But nonetheless, this 2018 Chiefs team, though it's a little bit more recent, I think earns a spot on the table as one of the best teams of the last decade. Number 7, 2017 Eagles. Now you want to talk about a complete team, you need to talk about the 2017 Eagles. As far as complete teams on this list, they might have had the most complete team out of anybody on this list. They had everything on the defensive side of the ball to be successful, and they had everything on the offensive side of the ball to be successful too. Everybody was talking about how this is going to be the year Philadelphia finally wins their first Super Bowl. They came in as the number one seed, riding high on Carson Wentz, who is you know putting up numbers like he's going to be the league MVP. And then unfortunately, he gets hurt, and then everybody's perspective on the team changes. Now, I think the playoff storyline and the overall Super Bowl victory definitely plays a part in how high these guys are are on this list you know they had a great season with Carson Wentz on the offensive side and on the defensive side you know both top five top ten units like they dominated all season they earned that number one seed but when he went down and Nick Foles came in you know everybody thought different they're like oh Nick Foles is in he's gonna choke it away the Eagles are done what does he do he fucks around and beats Tom Brady in the Super Bowl and you cannot write a better script than that the 2017 Eagles were dominant they were fun to watch and they definitely deserve the 2017 slot over the Jaguars in my opinion but at least we have Nick Foles to be our new quarterback but those 2017 Eagles were definitely the truth and they definitely deserve a spot on this list number six the 2015 Cardinals now I think this is one where I'm gonna get some people in the comments disagreeing with me This 2015 Cardinals squad will not be remembered by most because they ended up going to the NFC Championship game and Larry Fitzgerald was doing Larry Fitzgerald things in the playoffs and they had some of the most exciting games in the playoffs and they go into Carolina to face the Panthers and the Panthers drop a 50 bomb on them. Spoiler alert, that 2015 Panthers squad is also on this list. Now, the 2015 Cardinals were a shocker, not because they didn't have talent, but because their quarterback was Carson Palmer, who has just always been the subpar, middle-of-the-road guy, and what did he do? He ended up throwing for over 4,000 yards, putting up numbers to be a league MVP, and he was just monstrous out there on the field, connecting with Larry Fitzgerald, and you know, they had a good run game at the time as well, and then that defense was dope too. It was the peak era of Patrick Peterson and Tyron Matthew. This team was so fun to watch, and unfortunately, it ended in a tragic 
tragic way. But this 2015 Cardinals team is always going to be remembered by me, mostly because my boy Bryce is a huge Cardinals fan, and I will never forget his reaction to them losing to the Panthers or them beating the Packers in the playoffs. But without, without a doubt in my mind, I think this 2015 Cardinals squad deserves a spot on the list. Number five, the 2015 Carolina Panthers. The eventual NFC champions, the Carolina Panthers in 2015, and they were just as fun to watch as the 2015 Arizona Cardinals team. Now this game should have been more competitive, it should have been more, but it wasn't. This Panthers team just proved to be the more dominant team on that day. It was the peak of the connection between Greg Olson and Cam Newton. Jonathan Stewart was still holding things back in the backfield. And we had Luke Keekley in his prime, Josh Norman in his prime as well. These guys were dominant. They were out there doing their thing. And nothing was going to be stopping this Carolina Panthers team from going to the Super Bowl and winning other than a retiring Peyton Manning who, you know, he should have gone for that fumble in that Super Bowl. And maybe this Panthers team would even be higher on this list. Who knows? But when it was heading time to the Super Bowl, it didn't look like a team in the goddamn league could beat the Carolina Panthers. They were that dominant. They were that fun to watch. They had league MVP Cam Newton on their side, of course, throwing the ball. And he did a tremendous job that year. Same thing with Luke Keekley and Josh Norman held things down on the defensive end. This 2015 Panthers squad is definitely one of the best of the last decade. Number four, 2013 Broncos. The 2013 Broncos were the exact same as the 2018 Chiefs, but they were before. So everything the 2018 Chiefs did could not have been possible without the 2013 Denver Broncos. Demarius Thomas. Y'all remember Demarius Thomas? He was like the best wide receiver in the league. He was making headlines because Peyton Manning was just torching everybody, throwing and beating the touchdown record in a regular season. He had Julius Thomas, who would go on to be a Jaguar and later on bust he ended up catching that touchdown that put him over Tom Brady to have the record there was just so much going on on this offensive side of the ball you had Wes Welker the former Patriot and they just did not they could not would not be stopped they were pushing their way to the Super Bowl unfortunately they'd face another dynasty in that game the 2013 Seattle Seahawks the league's best offense versus the league's best defense what was going to give and what gave was a beat down by the 2013 Seattle Seahawks on the 2013 Denver Broncos. It was a terrible Super Bowl. So awful to watch and there was so much high hopes heading into this game but the Seahawks showed why they were so dominant and why it was just their year and not Denver's. But there definitely were some people that thought it was Denver's time and I was one of them. I thought Denver had the game won before even stepping on the field because I'm an offensive guy. But this defense, this Legion of Boom defense led by Gus Bradley of all people was the one to end this dominant reign of the 2013 Denver Broncos and maybe even start their own era. I won't even spoil if they're on the list. They might be, they might not be. Seahawks fans, stay tuned. You might get triggered. Number three, the 2014 New England Patriots. Nobody was going to beat the 2014 New England Patriots. You know, like what I said with the Seahawks in 2013, how it was just their year. Because it was. It was just their year. They were just going to win it no matter what. Now, they could have won it two years in a row against New England. But, of course, Russell Wilson threw that interception. And I know that that was some luck. And everybody's going to be like, Tom Brady's the luckiest player in the league. And all this and all that. But Tom Brady was so gosh dang dominant all year long with all these running backs too that's what he did all year is he just would check down to these running backs and these running backs would make all these great phenomenal plays and then you had Gronkowski as well and he was just hitting people up day in and day out like there was nobody nobody that was gonna end up beating Tom Brady in 2014 he dominated with the Patriots and he did it in the regular season he did it in the playoffs and he etched out in the Super Bowl but still etched his name into history as one of the best teams in the last 10 years. And is that the last time you're going to hear Tom Brady and the Patriots? Number two, 
the 2016 New England Patriots. The second time the Patriots are on the list, and it's number three and number two. Will they be number one? Will they sweep the top three? We will have to wait and see what number one is going to be. But as of now, we're talking 2016 New England Patriots, and this was a team that came out and just looked like they were ready to go. Like, it's just the Patriots in the playoffs. Like, I know by the way I'm explaining it, it is not very exciting. But when Tom Brady is finessing people and he's on top of his game, there's not a person in the league that could beat him. You know, that Super Bowl against the Falcons, who were later earlier named on this list, you know, that game was so much the Falcons getting into Tom Brady's head. And what did they do? They just unleashed the monster and Tom Brady proving why he's a football god, why he's the best quarterback to ever play the game of football, leads a monumental comeback, the biggest in Super Bowl history, to end up getting the victory for the Patriots. And it was basically because of that moment. That moment is going to solidify this 2016 Patriots team forever and why this is going to be not only one of the best teams of the last decade but just because of that Super Bowl win they might be one of the best squads ever top 10 maybe I don't know there's actually a lot of good squads you know what Treve takes that fiery take right back I don't think they're one of the top 10 all time but they are definitely one of the two best in the last decade who's number one you might ask the number one and best team of the last decade is the 2013 Seattle Seahawks. The 2013 Seattle Seahawks. It was their year. And they had everything. That NFC Championship game against the 49ers. Every year the Hawks and the Niners played that year was a nail biter. It was fun to watch. It established the Legion of Boom. And then it would ultimately blow up in the Seahawks, you know, their organization's face. You know, after a while, you know, Earl Thomas flipping off the camera and things like that. But back then, that was prime Hawk defense. Camp Chancellor, Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman. All of these guys in their prime, dude. And they had great linebackers, too. Bobby Wagner. You know, they had Michael Bennett. You know, prime Michael Bennett. No one was going to do anything against this defense. And this defense is honestly one of the best of all time. And I'm not... It might be the best, in my opinion. Because they just... They had layers, man. Everywhere on the defense, they were stacked with hella, hella talent. And on the offensive side of the ball... Oh my god, you have fucking Russell Wilson, who's, you know, soon gonna be, like, the savior of your entire franchise, because without him, you guys wouldn't win, like, literally, Russell Wilson is the biggest, like, the team depends on Russell Wilson the most, like, the team needs Russell Wilson more than Russell Wilson needs the team, you know what I'm saying, but he proved to be that type of player in the Super Bowl, he had Marshawn Lynch in the backfield, there was just so much going on in this game, where I think Denver didn't have the same caliber defense that Seattle had in that game, I think that Seattle had an offense that could compensate, and be kind of as good as Denver's, if their defense steps up, like, they were well balanced, they were definitely the more well balanced team, out of the Broncos and the Seahawks that year, and in my opinion, I hate the Seahawks, because I'm a local, you know, guy, the Seah- there's Seahawks fans, everywhere man I hate Seattle but without a doubt I have to say that their 2013 squad was the best squad of the last decade and that was the top 10 best NFL teams of the last decade what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget check the links down below as well you can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley also if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video I drop new content on this channel six days a week and nobody out working me them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.